Joining us now is Blaine Seitz. I hope I'm getting that right, Blaine, from uh, MobilitasGolf.com. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. Well, thank you for joining us, and uh, thanks to uh, responding to Harold there. We greatly appreciate it. The website is MobilitasGolf.com. And uh, if you go right on there to the uh, the home page, you'll get to see a little video. Maybe describe a little bit what uh, Mobilitas Golf is about in terms of the golf instruction and uh, helping guys get more out of their game. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been more, more or less involved with golf my entire life and. Since about the age of 15, I knew I wanted to be a golf instructor, and it was about that same age that I started to experience back pain from the golf swing, but at the time, I didn't really realize there was anything I could do about it. I had played a lot of golf, and everybody seemed to acknowledge that back pain and golf just go together, and you pop a few ibuprofen, you move on with your day, and you just get over it. And uh, it was back in about 2011, I was introduced into the fitness and mobility world uh, through one of my coworkers and really started to dive down this rabbit hole of understanding that you can actually change the way that your body functions to kind of optimize your swing. So I took this whole philosophy and put it together into uh, my coaching program where I now work with golfers on mobility and athletic development. And I'm a big believer that if we have compensations in the way that we swing a club, it's not just a matter of changing the position of the club. It's a matter of looking under the hood at what's going on with the rest of the car, the engine, the transmission, the braking system, all that good stuff. And then as you build a better car, you can drive it the way that you want it to. And that's where mobilitas comes from is kind of the Latin for mobility of just being able to move better and play better and, that's what I'm all about is helping people kind of remove those limitations that are preventing them from reaching the greatest potential. Good morning, Blaine. Thanks for coming on with us. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Harold. Uh, two things that uh, struck me as you were talking. One is uh, helping a player before they swing and remaining mobile. And the other is can developing a golf swing that will uh, mitigate any back issues? Is, am I hearing that right? Yeah, absolutely. So when I'm working with golfers, the first thing I do before we even swing a club is we sit down and kind of talk about a little bit of their history and athleticism, if they've had any, um, if they get any pain, if they've had any injuries, surgeries, replacements, anything like that. And I just want to get a good understanding of where that player is coming from and then I take them through a series of movement and performance kind of assessments and just seeing what their body can and can't do. And a lot of times in the traditional golf instruction world, we jump into looking at what the club does, but if we don't have the understanding of why it's doing what it does, we're going to end up hurting that player. And so I want to make sure that if they have any limitations in the way that, say, their hips move or that their shoulders move, that I'm not going to ask them to do anything that they can't do. Because once we start going down that rabbit hole, that's where our body tries to compensate. And, you know, we as humans, we want to do the best we can. So we say, oh, well, you know what? I'm working with this great instructor. They want me to get the club here. And we really fight for that position. And we'll figure out a way to make it happen. But it's going to be at the cost of what our body is able to do. And that's where a lot of back pain comes from. It's not necessarily, and that's not always the case, but it's not necessarily directly from the back. It's a referral pattern from somewhere else in the body, like the hips and the shoulders and so forth. I, I'm glad you brought this up because there's way too much emphasis on the equipment, making players better by by improving their equipment. We, we refer to that in our industry as trying to buy a game when, in fact, the club's not going to do a damn thing unless the player swinging it does something correct. So uh, thanks for saying that. I, I've i worked quite a bit with uh, body track and, and ground forces and things like that, and what I found is that uh, back issues can come directly from how our lower body and our hips work. Do you agree? Oh, 100%. So when... 
and this is a general statement. You're looking at, at every player as being different, but tell me what they – a normal player can't do. We talk quite a bit about the hips and the lower body movement, but there are, you know, there are three movements that the lower body has to make. One is a rotation. The other is a slide and the, and the third is a movement up. How are you going to make that player better with regard to his, uh, their hips? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of hip issues and everybody works on a case by case basis, but I'd say, the vast majority of golfers and non-golfers have problems with their hips because they spend so much time sitting behind a desk as part of their daily life. And what that does is it creates an imbalance in their body where certain muscles, like the front of their hips, become really short and tight and stiff. And then the backside, where our butt is and our hamstrings, they actually become longer and weaker and now we have to use muscles in ways that they're not meant to be used. So if that's the case, which it usually is with the vast majority of players, now those rotation aspects or the tilts and the side bends aren't going to happen. So what we'll do are different exercises or mobility techniques to lengthen the hip flexors then activate the glute muscles and start to bring a balance back into that. And then what I found with my teaching philosophy is anytime you increase the range of motion of, say, a joint or some muscles, at first our body doesn't quite know what to do with it. And some people get the sensation that they're like a newborn giraffe and they're learning how to walk on their legs. But I like to look at this as what I call a window of opportunity. So we increase the range of motion, and now our body is craving information on how do we now use this to our benefit. So in that window of opportunity, we can retrain the proper pattern that we're looking for. So if you're familiar with body track, there's a lot of great ground force information out there, and we find out that if players aren't quite loading their trail leg on the backswing, we can increase the range of motion in their trail hip, do some glute activation exercises, and then use that feedback from something like a body track or a K-Best and teach them what it's supposed to feel like. And then through that repetitive repetition there, we really get them to, you know, ingrain what it should feel like instead of trying to make it work with what they got. And that window of opportunity is a really critical point for making it stick and making it last. Blaine Seitz is our guest. Mobilitis Golf. I'm not saying it right still, but uh, M-O-B-I-L-I-T-A-S Golf.com uh, is the website to, to find out more specifics about uh, his uh, teaching performance. And I guess the question there, some golfers who maybe experience the back pain uh, but have played for a while may be hearing all this and thinking, oh, my goodness, this is a huge ordeal. How? What sort of a time frame, if they were interested in, in experiencing back pain and wanted to kind of readjust their swing to it, what sort of time frame are they looking at in terms of working on their own and with some, some instruction to reshaping their swing to where it won't cause them those sorts of issues in the in the future? Sure, really good question. So it really depends on what the issue is. If it's something where you have a player who after a round they just feel like a dull nagging in their back, that's going to be completely different than if you have somebody with a history of disc issues and herniations and things of that nature. So everybody's going to be on a case-by-case basis. But assuming we take just the uh, average, let's say, mid-40s, mid-50s players, been sitting behind a desk for a while, but they love playing golf, they go on golf trips, but they need to pop some ibuprofen, I mean, they're going to start to feel a change after our first session, and that's going to start to kind of compound on itself over the span of a few weeks. So the back pain thing, we're talking a lot of hips, but there are other things that go into it, such as the upper body, which we haven't touched on. Uh, but I would think within a, a couple of weeks of following a regimented program, they're going to start to notice a big difference, and their swing is going to start to become more authentic. You know, the idea is we don't want to have to do 20 things wrong 
in the right order to make a swing, our body should be able to tell us what our swing is going to perform like because everybody's body is a little bit different. So if we have somebody that does sit behind a desk for a while, we can teach them the right things to do and how to uh, mitigate making it worse. They're going to start to feel different in a very short amount of time. And then after that, it's just a matter of how much time are they willing to put in to maintain and then continue to increase that performance. Blaine, I wrote down as you were talking, uh, and actually prior to you mentioning it, the upper back. And I know there's a lot of players who deal with tension up in the shoulders. I see it all the time in my students where they take, can't take the club back or make any rotational movement because their shoulders tend to uh, migrate toward their ears. And, and so that would indicate to me that there's some issue or injury in their upper back. How can we, uh, how can we help that player? Absolutely. So another really great question, and it, in the vast majority of cases, it comes back to the same thing that was going on with the lower body, which is sitting behind a desk for 40-plus hours a day with our daily commutes, sitting at the table, watching TV, kids' sports games, you name it. And so we have this kind of almost chronic epidemic in our society these days that we slouch and round forward, we're texting on our phones, we're typing on keyboards, and what happens is our body is really good at adapting. And so what happens is when we sit in these rounded positions, our body thinks, okay, well, this must be the position that I should be in. And we adapt to it, which causes, again, an imbalance where, say, the muscles of the, the front of our chest become really short and tight, and that pulls our shoulders forward, and it puts our spine into what's called flexion. And the cool thing about the middle of our spine, the spine that goes through our rib cage, what's called our thoracic spine, is it's really good at moving forward and backward, side to side, and twisting. But it only likes to do one of those at a time. So if it's stuck in this flexed or rounded position forward, it's not going to be able to rotate. And that's just due to the very nature of how those structures are designed. So a lot of times in the golf swing, because we have players that sit behind a desk and then come straight out to the range and then, uh, God forbid, they try to just rip driver right off the bat because that's the one everybody loves it. And what's going to happen is they're not going to be able to rotate the way that they should be able to. And that causes a lot of backswing problems as well as lower back problems because the lower back by its very nature shouldn't move around very much. That's the job of our core is to keep our lower back stable and kind of in place to minimize that movement. But if what's going on above it near our shoulders and our thoracic spine, if that's not working, if what's going on below it where our hips and our butt is, if those aren't working, then our lower back tries to help out. And that's where most of the back pain comes from is we're trying to use that segment of our body in a way that it's not designed to use. And if we don't have a stable core or an active butt, we can't protect it from those stresses that we put on it. Well, I can tell you at a certain age, I don't have an active butt anymore. <laughs> Swigard's younger, and I'm not sure his is working either. So, <laughs> uh, Blaine, you talk, and I don't want to get too technical here, but what I noticed in a lot of players is that they have shoulder issues in the golf swing. Uh, you're talking about the rounding of the shoulders. And my physical therapist, the first thing they did uh, in my shoulder recovery was work on uh, strengthening my scapular muscles, which are, we talk about the front all the time, the pecs and the abs, but we forget those back muscles and particularly the scapular muscles. Anything that TPI has taught you or any of your work that uh, drills that people can do for those scap muscles? Yeah, so you make a really great point here. So if the chest is tight and it rounds our shoulders forward, so we need to balance it out by a combination of strengthening our back and by loosening up the front. And so in the TPI model, they'll make it very clear that if your shoulder blades aren't back and engaged the proper way, you're going to lose what's called external rotation of your shoulder. So there's a couple of really great exercises for this, and I'll, I'll do my best to describe it. But imagine that you're holding a driver with both hands on the club, 
but the club is actually behind you. So you're holding it kind of like if, if you were in the gym and you had a barbell, but in this case, I want it to be behind you, so it's maybe up against your butt. You have both hands on the club out to the side of your body, so maybe your little fingers are, are by your hips or just outside of that, and your palms are facing away from your body. Now, you can go as wide as you need to on the driver, but holding in that position, you can actually raise the club up and backwards so that it's raising above your butt and then it's going kind of behind your back. I hope this is still making sense. But once you get to that position, you try to rip the club apart. You try to pull it apart, and you're going to, at the same time, open up your chest and strengthen the back. And it's a really great, really simple exercise for bringing that balance back. And you can do it on the course, and you really don't need any equipment other than your golf club. And for anybody who's interested, I did a demonstration of this exercise when I was speaking on the TPI stage at the PGA show back in January. And I have that video on my YouTube page. So if my description doesn't do it justice, you can go watch that and see exactly what I'm talking about. I have a couple volunteers come up on the stage and, and we go through that exercise. Wow. Fascinating stuff. Uh, Blaine Seitz, mobilitasgolf.com. Uh, he's here in Portland. How else can people uh, get in touch with you to find out more about it or, or get some uh, instruction from you as well? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can go to my website, mobilitasgolf.com, and then I'm also on social media. My main platform right now is Instagram, but I also have a Facebook and YouTube page, and those are both at mobilitasgolf, or you can email me, mobilitasgolf at gmail.com. Fantastic. We really appreciate you taking some time for us this morning, and we'd love to have you back on down the road. Absolutely, guys. Anytime. I really appreciate the call. It's been fun talking with you guys.